If you have your Bibles, we're going to read a scripture that we've been reading the last few weeks. It's going to be Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came in, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the great, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now now that we're into this new year and decade, we've been looking so far at the things that Jesus says brings happiness to those who follow him. We've been doing that by looking at the Beatitudes, uh, that's what we just read, the Beatitudes, which was part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Now the word Beatitude means extreme blessing or happiness. Now, if you're honest with yourself, most of the things that we just read don't seem to be happy things. Yet Jesus said that we will be blessed and it will bring happiness. The first thing that Jesus says would bring happiness is humility. That's at verse 3 of Matthew 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit or humble, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now last week, we saw that Jesus says that sorrow is the way to happiness. That's in verse 4 of Matthew 5. Blessed are those who mourn or who are sorrowful, for they shall be comforted. Now today, we're going to talk about the fact that Jesus says that being meek leads to happiness. So our our main verse today is going to be verse 5 of Matthew 5, and that is, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, can you truly be meek and happy at the same time? Can you picture a meek person who's also a happy person? You might find that rather challenging because out of our misunderstanding of meekness. In a world that thinks only an aggressive and ambitious person can get ahead in life, it's a little hard to believe that those who are meek will inherit anything, much less the earth. Jesus yet, Jesus said, meekness is the way to happiness. Blessed or happy are the meek. That's what he said. Now, Jesus was not implying that being fearful or weak brings happiness. Instead, Jesus uh, Jesus was talking about an attitude or an outlook. The meekness he describes requires us to be strong people who are grounded in him. It demands us to have a personal relationship with God. This is a kind of meekness that really does bring happiness. Now, meekness is the way to happiness for several reasons. One, meekness allows us to maintain an even temperament. Now, Aristotle defined meekness as the mean of the, the mean between two extremes. Intense anger and excessive indifference. So Aristotle said meekness is the mean between intense anger and excessive indifference. It's a happy medium between too much anger and too little passion. There's a fellow by the name of William Barclay. He was a Scottish minister and a professor of divinity. Uh, at the University of Glasgow. Now he suggested 
that this beatitude should be translated, blessed is a man who is always angry at the right time and never angry at the wrong time. You know, the scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 26 and 27, we're familiar with it, says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. So when is the right time to be angry? The right time to be angry is when insult or injury is suffered by others and not us. Now it's hard, I realize it, it's, it's hard for me. It's hard for us to maintain an even temp temperament and not get angry when we are injured or insulted. So how do we develop this even temperament? How do we avoid the extremes of severe anger or apathy? Well, it won't surprise you when I say that we cannot. We can't, but God can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Now, how, how does God give us an even temperament? How does God uh, allow us or enable us to maintain an even temperament? Well, first, through salvation. Nothing happens without salvation happening first. We must be born again. We actually must become new and different people. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17 say, From now on, therefore, we regard no man according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. Now, once we become that new person, the Holy Spirit actually comes and indwells us. The Holy Spirit actually comes to dwell in us and begins to work in our lives, developing the fruit or the characteristics that result in our ability to have an even temperament, which allows us to become meek. Now, the fruit of the Spirit, let me read those. We're going to read the fruit of the Spirit. This is in Galatians 5. 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, we're going to refer to this scripture a couple of times. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So, so, the, so the, first of all, through salvation, we are enabled to to become meek, or to be meek, or to exhibit meekness. Meekness also uh, allows us to develop self-control. Meekness allows us to maintain an even temperament and allows us to develop self-control. Now the word translated meekness, the Greek is the Greek word uh, paros, it's spelled P like Paul, R-A-U-S. Now that word has a second meaning. It's often used to express the idea of self-control. And we just read in the Fruit of the Spirit that self-control is an attribute of the fruit of the Spirit. So, this beatitude, we said, if this word uh, paros, uh, the meaning of this word also expresses the idea of self-control, we could read to translate this beatitude this way. Blessed are they who are entirely self-controlled, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, weakness is giving into the worst that's in you, while meekness is a mastery over it. Weakness is giving in to the worst that's in you. Meekness is a mastery over it. To be meek does not mean that you are cowardly, 
but it does mean that you are strong enough not to retaliate when wrongly treated. Now we do all have rights. We all have rights, but those who are meek do not insist on those rights. We do all have rights, but the meek person doesn't insist on those rights. I'll give me a couple examples of, the, of uh, from the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. I'm going to start at 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 8 and 9. 1 Corinthians 8, 8 and 9. Now Paul is writing about food and he's writing about whether, whether uh, the Christians should eat food that's been used in pagan ceremonies or sacrifices. He's writing about food, but you'll get the point as we read this. The point is, we have rights, but those of us that are meek, or if you're meek, you don't insist on them. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 8 and 9, and verse 13. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Another example is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 23 and 24. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Even though Paul was saying Christians were free to eat the meat under certain conditions, that they should not allow this freedom to injure or confuse others. To get the full picture, I invite you to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapters 8 and 10. The point is, the meek are able to not let their freedom harm someone else. The meek do not insist on their freedom. Having great freedom those who are meek do not flaunt that freedom. They would rather forgive than accuse. And that kind of self-control results in inner peace. People who cannot control their anger, their greed, their lust, their tongue, or their ambition will never be with peace will never have inner peace because they can't control those things. They will constantly be at war with themselves. However, the meek, beginning with salvation, have placed in us by the Holy Spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control that allows us, enables us to do the things we're, not, we're talking about, have a maintained an even temperament, and to not flaunt our freedom. Now, meekness expresses itself also through gentleness. Which brings up a third meaning of the Greek word that's translated for meekness. It tells us something about the quality of a happy life. Meekness may be translated kindness or gentleness. Let's go back to the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control against such things there is no law. So meekness and gentleness and self-control are characteristics of a strong person, not a weak person. A meek person is not a weak person. A meek person is a strong person and a gentle person. Now, gentle person or meek person is considerate 
of others. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. So a gentle person or a meek person is considerate of others even when they have done wrong. A meek or gentle person is considerate of others even when they have done wrong. A gentle person or a meek person admits, can admit their fault to others. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Proud, arrogant, or insecure people can never bring themselves to do what we just read. A proud, arrogant, or insecure person is not considerate of others and cannot admit their faults to others. Benjamin Franklin once said, none but the well-bred man knows how to confess a fault or acknowledge himself in error. Meek people, or humble people, bravely admit their shortcomings and that leads to happiness not only to them, but to others. A gentle person or a meek person also encourages others. Titus chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 say this. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy towards all people. A gentle person, a meek person, encourages others. As long as you maximize others' faults while minimizing your own, you can never be happy. If you maximize, if I maximize your fault, and minimize mine, I can never be happy. However, if I can can maximize your 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 goodness, if I can maximize that, I can be happy. And if I can confess my wrongs to you, if I can if I'm strong enough to confess my wrongs to you, I can be happy. However, we cannot do that unless we have the Holy Spirit in us. Because as human beings, we're proud and we're arrogant, so we cannot do those things on our own. We cannot be meek people on our own. We must allow the Holy Spirit to do that, and we can and then be happy. As Jesus says, the meek are assured of victory. Jesus said, the meek are assured of victory. Because he said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. <clears throat> now this truth actually is affirmed a number of times in the Bible. So I just want to give us a few from Psalms. The fact that the meek will inherit the earth, the meek are assured the victory. Let's look at Psalms 37, verses 9 through 11. Psalms 37, 9 through 11. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. That's Psalms 37, 9 through 11. Psalm 22, verse 26. Psalms 22, verse 26. 
But the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Assurance of victory. The meek are assured of victory. Psalm 25, verse 9. Psalm 25, verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach the way. One more. Psalms 147, verse 6. Psalms 147, verse 6. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He cast the wicked down to the ground. The meek are assured of victory. And that should bring happiness to us. Now, it's significant, it's significant that Jesus said the meek shall inherit, not capture. That's significant. It's significant that he said the meek shall inherit, not capture the earth. An inheritor is, is a receiver, not an aggressor. An inheritor is a receiver and not an aggressor. The meek receive, we're not aggressive. God in his providence has structured the world so that the meek are certain to inherit it. The meek shall inherit the earth because we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us to exhibit the love that God has for the world to others. So we're able then to deal with those things that come to us without retaliating, without salvation, and the Holy Spirit, the tendency will be to retaliate or defend ourselves with God and the fact that we have the Holy Spirit. We don't have to do that. God is our defense. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. So the meek shall inherit the earth. As Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, if you think meekness is hard to develop, you are absolutely right. I cannot tell myself to be meek. You can't tell yourself to be meek. You can't just say it and you'll become meek. That will not happen. God never intended for us to make ourselves meek. That's not our nature. But remember, as I said before, what we cannot do for ourselves, God does for us. First through salvation, and then the continuing work in our lives through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The question is, then, have you been born again? Have you allowed the Holy Spirit to fill you? When you do, the wonderful quality of meekness will be yours.